No, the red light didn't come on. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm your lay leader. I'm not going to tell you who I am. I'm your lay leader, Arlene Martin. I hope everyone is well this morning. So happy to see everyone here. Uh, let's go out and drag some people in off the street. <laughs> um, let's see what else. I have to read off this because I forget all the time. Uh, please take time to complete the communication and prayer request form. They'll be uh, collected and all prayers will be lifted up today and remembered throughout the week. Uh, join us for refreshments afterwards in the East Room. I know my East from West here, but otherwise I get lost. And um, you're welcome to make a use of our, of our what? Family worship room located just outside the sanctuary in the West Wing. The service is broadcast in there. I see we got a lot of little ones today. Ooh, ooh look at all those beautiful babies. Wow. So I'd like to thank, who am I thanking? I'm thanking Arlene Martin and I for the treat. Does anybody know her? Uh, I want you to be guinea pigs, okay? I tried, I'm trying a new recipe, chili con queso. So, <clears throat> if anybody falls out, uh, I didn't make it. <laughs> so, um, what else do I have to do? Let's see, that's, okay, dates to remember. Oh, choir practices after worship. The 17th is family prayer time at 6.30. The 20th is choir practice after worship. And the 27th is family movie night. It's going to be little boy. And if anybody would like to be a greeter, a treater, a flower person, a flower person, oh, bring flowers, or um, an acolyte if they want to be an acolyte. Do I have to remember anything else? The bake sale. Oh, the bake sale is coming up. Is that the 26th? The 26th. So um, get your bacon pans out and help us out. Everything has to be individually wrapped. And if you can't bake, buy a package of cookies and wrap them up. Let's see, what else? Helping Hogs Corner. Oh, bring in your soda tabs. They're donated to Ronald McDonald House, helping hugs. Carolyn Hug and her husband and children. And uh, is that all, Pastor? Oh, any anybody? Oh, yes, ma'am, stand up. Aris. Joyce Sars, son in law. <laughs> Here I got, I got my. Joyce Sars, I can't even remember myself. I had my hand in your back helping you out. You. I can't even help myself, I'm sorry. <clears throat> So is that all? Is that all, Pastor? Pastor? Okay, uh, we're going to sing. Huh? Oh, call to worship. See? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have to have our. The twenty sixth in the morning. <laughs> I'm just turning over. Okay, Friday night. If you want to 
drop off bakery goods. She'll be here. Okay, uh, call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise God in the assembly of the faithful. Let all God's children rejoice in their king. Rejoice in our king. Give glory to God's holy name. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. And please join us in our praise hymn, verses 1 and 4, uh, number 114. Thank you. shall we father we just want to thank you for this day God I thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit that is God even though it seems like it just gets out of control father you bring it into control through the presence of your precious spirit God today may the glory of your word shine through all that we do today and God I want to thank you so much for the gift of life through Jesus Christ and I want to thank you for the victories of this week. God, sometimes it looks like the darkest before the dawn. And God, sometimes we think that the darkness lasts for so long. But God, when that dawn comes, when that light shines, we begin to see as we've never seen before. May the presence and the power of your word and spirit overshadow us today. God, I pray that you would receive glory and honor. And Father, that you, you would be blessed by our presence here today. God, we rejoice in your presence. For where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us. So God, we come together in the mighty name of Jesus to rejoice in your word and your spirit. And may you today receive honor and glory. And everyone said, Amen. please be seated. Our next hymn is number 130. from whom all blessings flow. Prayer request. If you haven't had the time today, I'm going to vamp here a little bit so you can fill it out. But if you haven't had the time today, fill out a prayer request, put it in this box. If you don't get it done in time, would you please put it in the offering plate and I'll still get them. But today, 
is a great and awesome day. How many of you think this is a great day? I'm so excited. The message God's given me for today is absolutely incredible. And I pray that it will touch each and every heart. And I know that God is, is an awesome God. So today, um, meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Brendan's not here. Oh, I got somebody. Thank you. Miss Jenna will pass through. Uh, and as we're doing this, I'd like to do something a little different. Arlene, would you stand up? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Arlene. Happy birthday to you and many more. Thank you so much. You are. You are blessed. Praise God. Um, while we're waiting for the, the prayer requests to come back down and us to pray for them, um, Mrs. Stoniker, would you stand up, please? Mrs. Stoniker, she worked very hard for us today. Um, Mrs. Stoniker has made an effort for us to receive an AED, and the gentleman sitting next to her is Andy Doyle, the fire chief of Shorewood, and I just found out that Mrs. Stoniker does an awful lot of work. What? The Troy Fire Protection District. I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. Andy, would you mind coming up? And, and, and you may sit down, Mrs. Stoniker. Thank you. Would everybody give the chief a, a nice round of applause? And, and it's really with a great humility because I know of what they cost. <laughs> and I thank you so much for, for making this available to us. It's our pleasure uh, on behalf of the Troy Fire Protection District and Eileen and her family who've done so much for our fire department. We felt it was uh, just right to give back to somebody else. So. Um, hopefully you never have to use it, but it's there if you need it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. God bless you. I'm absolutely blessed. So let's pray for the, the prayer request. Let's pray for the Troy Fire Protection District. Let's pray for all of our first responders, both police, fire, and ambulance. And let me tell you, I, I've been involved with the police department for a long, long time, not this police department, but one every place we've ever been. And the only people that I know that runs toward danger are policemen, firemen, and ambulance drivers. Everybody else runs away. So today, let's uh, remember them especially as we pray for these requests. Father, we just want to thank you so much for the gift that you've made available to us. And God, I pray that you would bless especially today the Troy Fire Protection District. And God, all their men who, and women who have put their lives on the line to protect, to serve, and God, most of all, to keep us safe. And God, I pray for our, our firemen, our ambulance drivers, and our police department. God, in a day and age when it seems like there's becoming less and less respect for those who live in danger for us, may they be protected. May we pray especially for them, and thank you so much, Father, for providing this gift through them. May we today be blessed because of your, your love for us. And God, I thank you for Eileen as she has put together the, the effort to make this happen. And God, I pray for these requests especially today. Lord, I know that there are incredible things 
that are happening because of the prayers of the saints. Your word says, your word tells us, God, that the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people avail much. And God, I know that throughout this nation, there are people who pray when we send these out. And God, may the blessing and power of your spirit be upon them. And may your Holy Spirit bless and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's sing our prayer hymn. Verses 1 and 2 of page 621. Today's scripture reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of, our, of God, not the result of your works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand to be our own way of life. For those of you who weren't here last week, you didn't see my big promotion. I've been promoted to time with children. So if there's any kids or any kids that want to come up and humor me and sit down, if not, I'm still going to tell you the story because it's, it's a pretty good one. Look at the way they dressed you, snazzy. <laughs> they love me. Yeah. How you doing? Good? Cool. They dressed you snazzy too. What do you think of his vest? It's funny. You're like, who wears vests? about it. All righty. So, I heard a pretty cool story this week when I was at school. I'll go down here. Heard a pretty cool story that was uh, told at school. And it, it reminded me of the story in the Bible that um, was about Jesus. And there was this guy who was paralyzed his entire life. He couldn't move very well. And so one day Jesus is um, gathered around, and they're all in this house, and it's like packed. Like nobody can come through the doors, the windows, and um, the, the friends of this paralyzed guy, they're like, well, we gotta get him there because G this Jesus, he can heal people. 
So they decide to come in through the roof. And like all SWAT team, I don't know if they kicked it in or if there's just a convenient hole, but they lowered him down through the roof and they put him in front of Jesus. And Jesus looks at the guy and says, wow, you guys got great faith. And he says, your sins are forgiven. And all of these teachers and religious people around there, they were like, hold up a minute. Why are you saying your sins are forgiven? Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus looks at him, and he, he gives one of these, like, mic drops, like, comes up and says the things where it goes like that. And he can just walk out because that's how cool it was. He says, what's easier, to say your sins are forgiven? Now I'm going to mess up the audio of the whole service. <laughs> what's easier to say your sins are forgiven? Or get up and walk. And he says, I say this because the Son of Man has authority on earth. So he says to the paralyzed guy, get up and walk. And so this paralyzed guy gets up, jumps around, and is, is brandy spanking new. And I was thinking, you know, this would be really cool if this could happen today. And I heard a story this, um, this week of this, this teacher I was listening to. His son is over in India, and he's with this Indian pastor. And they had the same kind of thing. They were out one day, and these, this whole group of friends, they had this guy who, who is real twisted up. They said he looked like a pretzel. Can you imagine a human pretzel? It, w it would look pretty, pretty painful. So they brought him there. And uh, the Indian pastor said, you know, we're going to pray for this guy, so um, I want you, the, the, the guy's son, to put your hands on him and pray for him. And he's like, okay. And he was probably remembering this time where Jesus healed the guy, but he was saying, oh, man, if I pray and nothing works, this is going to be pretty embarrassing. And so he puts his hand on there, and they start praying. And it seems like the, the Indian pe uh, preacher knows what's going to happen. And as they have their, their hands on this guy, they can actually feel his spine and his bones coming out of joint and then popping back into place. And when they're done praying, this guy's, they can actually see these bones moving inside them and straightening out. And when the guy's done, he pops up and he's done, uh, dancing and everything else. And everybody's there and they see this and they're, I mean, they're, the next day the crowd, crowds were drawn. Like, they, we got to see this guy that prayed and healed this guy because whoever he's serving is, is somebody that's pretty, pretty worth worshiping. So it's kind of cool that God is still doing these physical healings, but even more important, he still and has always been there to forgive sins. So all the things that we do that you know, we feel bad about and, and kind of makes us feel ashamed that we can always go to Jesus and we can always have that spiritual healing. So that's it. I thought that was pretty cool. That someone's bones and stuff were moving under his skin. That's nasty, but it's, it's cool. It's cool. All right. Cool. You can disperse. You guys can go back. The ushers come forward, please, and have a seat on morning offer. <laughs> Thank you.
we stand. Father, we ask your blessing upon these gifts, tithes, and offerings, and God, that you would make us wise stewards of all you've given, and Father, that we would rejoice as you pour out your great blessings upon us. We pray this in Christ's holy and blessed name. Amen. Please be seated. What a mighty God we serve. The title of my message today is No More Excuses. Hmm. I realize that that title kind of makes us a little weary. But anyway, God wants to do a new thing in your life. Our, our launching scripture is Isaiah chapter 24, verses 9 through 10. If you turn in your Bibles with me, please. Do what? Isaiah 42, verses 9 and 10. It's easy to come up with excuses, especially when unfair things have happened to you. When you've been hurt by circumstances or people. Yet I want to show you how we can get over those circumstances. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 9 through 10 says this, The former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Sing unto the Lord the same old song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Hmm. Let this message guide you every step of your way to show you how to... To let go of the old and sing a new song and you can move forward into the bright future. It's time to step into the new now. New now. Boy, that, that sounds good. It's easy to come up with a reason why we can't accomplish a dream. Why we can't be happy. Why we can't overcome a problem. Excuses are what? A dime a dozen. Okay? We think, I've got an excuse uh, to be sour, the traffic was bad, my boss was mad, uh, my wife was late, I'm late, uh, the kids are acting up. All of the things that we want to throw in to make an excuse for, we can do that. People have hurt me. They didn't keep their word. They've offended me. I've been betrayed. I've got an excuse to settle where I am. I had a bad childhood. I lost a loved one. I went through a breakup. As long as you're making excuses, you'll justify staying where you are. Where are you? Are you where you want to be? How many of us can honestly say we're exactly where we want to be right now? One. Two. That's why we're here. I'll probably embarrass him. He's going to throw something at me. But um, a gentleman walked in today and looked at me and said, we're connecting now. And I want to tell you something. Something happened inside me when he said that to me. Something happened inside of me because I know the struggle that went on. But there are no more excuses to make. Excuses give us permission 
to settle for less than God's best. You can find an excuse about anything. It's easy to find an excuse. I can't lose weight. My metabolism's too slow. I can't break this addiction. Everybody in my family's had it. It's in my genes. Well, let me tell you something. Change your genes, will you? Stop, stop believing that lie. You see, you may, it may be in your genes, but you can turn off those genes. You in Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, anyone who is in Christ is what? The same old thing over and over again? No. Anyone in Christ is a new creature. Behold, all things are new. Old things are passed away. All things become new. When this gentleman prayed a simple six-word prayer, things changed. Have you ever had something change? Maybe not instantly. Maybe not healed like Jesus does. Maybe healed over a bit of time. Maybe, like Andrew was talking about, maybe not while everybody could watch the bones go back into your position. But God does the healing. Lord, be merciful to me. A sinner. If you pray that prayer, you become a new creature. The only way it's going to happen, the only way you're going to overcome those things is get rid of the excuses. As long as you're blaming the past, blaming the neighbor, blaming the traffic, blaming the weather, blaming your boss, blaming your wife, blaming your kids, blaming, blaming, blah. Have you ever heard this, this statement? Blah, 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 blah. My children... Forty years ago, when I would say things, they'd go, blah, 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 blah. Sixty-five years ago, when I was a five-year-old, my mom and dad would tell me something, I'd go, blah, 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 blah. That's what it sounded like to me. I love the honesty of kids. They're so good. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to refuse living your life with a chip on your shoulder or carrying a crutch around. I want you to refuse to stop living in anger and being upset and having no passion. When was the last time you were passionate about anything? Raise the level of your thought from the gutter and come on up with me. When was the last time you were really passionate about something? other than the excuse you have for being where you're at. Other than the excuse of mediocrity. I'm going to give up my dreams. I'm not, I can't push my goals. I can't overcome the obstacles. I'm breaking, uh, I, I can't break these bad habits. How about no excuses? I want you to say this with me. I'll say it once and then I'm going to repeat it for you. I know who I am. I am a child of the Most High God. Can you say that with me? I know who I am. I am a child of the Most High God. Say it one more time. I know who I am. I am a child of the Most High God. Now say it by yourself. Praise God. I want you to put that down inside of you right now. I want you to tattoo that on the underside of your eyelids. I heard, I heard this, this uh, I listened to XM radio when I'm in a truck, and, I, and, and uh, on classic radios, uh, they, asked, they blindfolded this guy, and, and they said, can you see anything? And the guy said this, on a clear day, I can see the blindfold. I'll scrape that one off later. <laughs> I know who I am. I'm a child of the Most High God. I am a child of God. I don't think, I'd, I don't think I can accomplish my goals. I'm not that talented. I really don't have the connections. I don't get... Uh, I didn't get what my friends got. If you needed what your friends had, God would have given you what you friends have. But God gave you what you have. And God gifted you in a special and perfect way. Here's the key. 
If I didn't get it, then I don't need it. You all heard the story about my truck. I didn't need a new truck, although I wanted one. I did. <laughs> Stop it. I didn't. I went to have my oil changed, and I said, huh, that truck's still here. Three months it sat on the showroom floor. So I told Luke, the sales manager, make me a deal I can't refuse. He'd come back with some ridiculous number, and I said, I'm going to leave. <laughs> that wasn't a good enough number. Before I got back here, he called me with a real number. And uh, I said, I'll be there in a half hour. 20 minutes later, I ended up there. But if you don't need it, you ain't going to get it. You have exactly what you need. If you, if you needed it, God would have given it to you. God would have given it to you in a great way. Quit comparing yourself and running your own, but run your own race. Stop comparing yourself to Jan. I can't play the organ as well as her, but she can't sing like I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's the attitude that I want you to have. Why do I want you to have that attitude? Okay? First of all, nobody can be better at being you than you. Do I need to say that again? Nobody can be better at being you than you. You, 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 you. Nobody can be any better at being her than her. Of course, she's the queen and we all, people... Friends, God wants you to do something new with your life. He wants you to do something so new. He wants you to take a new level of your destiny. He wants you to stop allowing excuses to hold you back. One day I, I was feeling less than my normal self, where my normal self says today's the best day of my life, right? I was feeling less than my normal self, and Stella said, and I was feeling inadequate. I was feeling well, I wasn't up to par. I didn't feel like I could do the things I needed to do. And that's one of the reasons my daughter and I are going to ride rag ride next year, because we have decided we can do it. I hope I still have that attitude next July. <laughs> that's 485 miles on a bicycle seat. But... Do you understand? You can't do anything if you sit on the couch thinking, I wish I could. Get up off of your blessed assurance. Move out and, and attempt to do something. Why? You can do anything you put your mind to, Stella told me one day. I was feeling really bad. I thought I was done. I thought God had set me up on the shelf. I thought there was no more preaching. I thought I'd just go kind of sit along and we'll go out to the racetrack and, you know, have fun with the guys and, and then come home and everything would be fine and I'd be doing my little religious duty. God said, I'm not done with you. Lord, it's too hard. She says, you can do anything you put your mind to do. I'd miss the promise of having a bigger ministry than Oral Roberts. I'd miss the promise of being the vice president in charge of operations at Rogers dealership. I missed the promise of all the things that I thought I had, I had to accomplish. And guess what? God said, I ain't done with you yet. And I went, I'm not good, I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not good. I don't have the right body. I don't have the right frame of mind. I, that was the problem. I didn't have the right frame of mind. But Stella looked at me and she said, you can do anything you put your mind to do. Sometimes we need people to speak the truth and love to us. You know that? Sometimes we need to hear the fact that we've been living with a, with a whole gaggle of crutches in our closet. And whenever we feel like it, we get the one out that best suits our need. There are no ifs, ands, ors, or buts. It's time to lose the excuse bag. Step up into the new level. Start learning something new. Start training for the next program. Start taking more responsibilities. We're going to have training on how to use the AED. How many of you want to take the training? Come on. The rest of you can too. You know why? Because it's real simple. It talks to you. 
But if you don't ever get out and learn how to do it, you'll never do it. There'll be somebody laying on the sidewalk and you say, oh, there's an AED there, but I don't know how to use it. And you'll let them die. That's the way it is in the spirit. Everyone in this room has got the ability to save someone's life spiritually. And we go, no, that's too hard. I don't think I could do I'm not. I'm not the preacher. Call the preacher. How many of you know that every person in this room, every person in this room is called to be a priest of the Most High God? Every one of us ought to have a collar on today, except me. I don't wear that junk. You need to make... I'm going to tell you something. How many of you ever heard this statement? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. How many of you, how many of you feel like you're that old dog? Yeah? Well, let me tell you something, old dog. I'm going to tell you something. Everything you need, God has given you. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I've learned it depends on what kind of a dog you have. Stella had the right kind of dog. I'm well able, I'm equipped, and nothing's too hard for me. Remember, remember when Commodore 64 came out and everybody says, wow, that's a computer. Remember when IBM had the AS400 and it took up a room as big as this? And you had to do punch cards and put it all in. And then they came out with the, the big 8-inch floppy disk, and then the 5.5-inch floppy disk, and the 3.5-inch floppy disk, and then the CD, then the D. You know what? When all them things started, I didn't know anything about a computer. I still don't know too much, but I'm enough to get in trouble. It's your time to shine. You see, it all depends on what kind of dog you are. Are you willing to learn a new trick? Are you willing to learn something that God has probably been teaching you all along? Or are you willing to stay there and sit down and absolutely let the world pass you by? I'm not willing for that. I'm not willing to let PCC do that. I'm not willing to let one person in this room do that. It's not you or you or you or you. I believe God has greater plans than we could ever imagine here. You see, get rid of those limiting excuses. Stay open for new ideas, new ways to do things. When we keep making excuses, they become a crutch. And then we say, we can justify that we're not where we're supposed to be. They hurt me. They did me wrong. Now I have to use this self-pity crutch. Uh, they hobble along and, and say, oh, wow, I can't do that. You know, Bob made fun of me the other day, and now my, my feelings got hurt. I heard Jan say under her voice, under her breath, I wish he could sing better. <laughs> she doesn't say it under her breath anymore. She just blurts it out right up there. But it doesn't really matter because I'm going to keep singing until I learn how to do it right. That's sort of like the young boy was called into a church. He was just fresh out of cemetery. And they called him in and he walks into the church and they, he preached a stem winder and a belly buster of a sermon. And man, everybody loved it. It was one of them Bible-toting, devil-hating, demon-chasing scriptural filled sermons and everybody said wow look at the great preacher next Sunday he comes back and he preached the same exact sermon and the elders said well he's probably a little nervous so the third Sunday he comes back and he preaches the same sermon and everybody says what's going on they take him into the office and they said son the first sermon was great the second sermon we understand you're probably a little nervous but what is this third sermon stuff he says I'm going to preach it till you get it right there's another one on the back wall. You see, we can pick up the inferiority crutch. crutch. We can pick up the not, not so par crutch. I've made some mistakes crutch. I don't raise, didn't raise my kids right. I blew my relationship crutch. That's why I'm using the regret crutch. It's not up to, to you to use your crutch. We just take any crutch that's convenient. Any reason. Well, I'm too tall. I'm too 
short, I'm too skinny, I'm too fat, I'm too old, I'm too young. Don't use any of those. You keep stepping up into new levels if you take away those crutches. When you get rid of self-pity because it became a crutch. Well, I didn't get what I wanted out of life, and I'm so sorry, and I really wanted it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pine away my life because I didn't get what I wanted, and I'm just going to be so sad. It's self-pity little crutch. We've all had bad breaks. We don't understand. If I was going to keep you from your destiny, I would do it by making you feel pity. Oh, pity poor me, pity poor me. Don't let it become a crutch. Don't use it as an excuse to settle for where you are. Stir up the gift that's in you. Every person in this room has got more than one gift, and God says, stir the gifts up. Get passionate about something. Get passionate about somebody. Do you have a relative, a friend, a neighbor, somebody who doesn't know the Lord? Do you have a co-worker that, that uses colorful language? That language would melt the paint off a battleship. You say, yeah, I do that too. It's just a habit. I can't get over it. You can get over any habit you want if you'll stop making that excuse. See in Scripture, John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. It says, And he went along and he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? Because he was born blind. Whose sin was that? Was that your sin? Was that your sin? Was that the boy's sin? Whose sin was it that caused that boy to be born blind? You know what the disciples were asking? Who can I blame? Who can I point a finger at and blame and say, it was you? But you see, it wasn't for anybody's blame. Do you remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, this wasn't his fault or their fault. It's so that I could be glorified. They wanted to blame somebody. They wanted an excuse, a reason. And Jesus said in John chapter 9, verses 3 through 7, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. And Jesus said, Jesus, But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud. Boy, how would you like to be healed that way? <laughs> We'll get some dust bunnies and make some mud. And then we'll just gush it into your eyeballs. And then we'll say, as Jesus did, he spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. And he didn't say anything else but go. Wash in the pool of Siloam. That means scent. So the man went and washed and came home. Blind as a bat. No, he came home seeing because he obeyed. He didn't use the excuse. I can't find a pool of Siloam. Just like the man who was lured down through the thing. Just like the other people that Jesus healed. Jesus asked this question. What do you want me to do? Jesus said. You see... When you have a bad break, a disadvantage, don't get stuck looking for someone or something to blame. You're not always going to understand why things happen. But if you stay in faith, it won't work against you. It will work for you. God will use it to show you how good can come out of your life. Like these people, it's easy to want to blame somebody. Blame the parents. Blame the doctor. Blame this. Blame that. My friends, stop a minute and think. What did Jesus say? It's so that the glory of God, so that God could receive glory. You see, this guy had all the reason in the world to feel sorry for himself. The only power that has ever been able to hold you back, you give power to it. You allow it to hold you back. People can't stop your destiny. 
what they say about you, what they think about you, what you think they said about you, what you think they think about you, how you think they are. But if you'll let it go, if you'll fight your battles, God will be your vindicator. You see this principle in life of Joseph. Remember Joseph? Remember the story of Joseph? Joseph had the coat of many colors, and he was the father's favorite. Remember? He even told everybody, I'm the father's favorite. Look at the coat he gave me. He didn't give you one. <laughs> he gave me a great voice. Look at the one he gave you. Oh, no. That's what everybody else says to me. But you understand, Joseph was the favorite, and, and he was sold into slavery by his brothers. They threw him in a well. And Joseph went to jail. Thirteen years he was in jail for a crime he didn't commit. Betrayed. Forgotten. Until one day, God said, it's time to vindicate you. Oh, by the way, there's going to be a great famine in seven years. I need Joseph out of prison. So he got him out of prison. He became second in command to all of Egypt, took care of all of Egypt, had enough grain that when the famine came, he could feed countries around him. Raised. Raised up. No bad break can stop you. No disadvantage. No injustice. God has the final say. Well, they hurt me. They did me wrong. I'm going to say this respectfully, but I want you to hear this. Everybody's been hurt. You just have to get over it. Is there anybody in this room that's never been hurt by someone's word? Or even look at somebody where somebody goes... Every one of us has been hurt before like that, haven't we? Every one of us. Whether it's with a relative or a friend or a preacher, any one of us, we've been hurt. But everybody's been hurt, and you just have to get over it. They left me out. Everybody's been left out. They lied to me. Everybody's been lied about and lied to. It's not worth missing your destiny over. I'm not saying that what they did was okay. What I'm saying is, it doesn't have to control the rest of your life. It doesn't have to control the rest of your life. That's it now. No more excuses. Draw the line in the sand. I can't do anything about my past, I can't, but I can do something about right now. I can't even do anything about my future. The only thing I have is right now. And for those of you in the north, that means this very moment, right now, it means right now, you have control. Either give it to God, or you keep trying to, to muddle through on your little crutch and going, Oh, poor pity, poor me, look at me, I'm in Plainfield, and I should be in Tulsa, or I should be on TV, or I should be famous. If you live in Plainfield and you mention the name Bill Beagle in town, it's not famous, it's infamous. And I'll say this on record, the minute that building next door becomes a 1A liquor license, we're going to court. Sam, write it down. The minute they issue a 1A liquor license for that building next door, we're going to court. You may have to come and arrest me. But it ain't going through. How do you know? Because the law says it ain't. And even though Plainfield's home rule and Mr. Collins thinks he can make his own rules, I serve the living God. Hello? I serve a living God that loves me and cares for me and will do my bidding for me and will vindicate me and you. You see, Isaiah 61.3 says, Beauty for ashes. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. I will put on the garment of praise. I will put... It's an old song we used to sing. One of them little spiritual choruses, you know. 
Double for injustice. What do you mean double for injustice? Look at Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Hey devil, look out. Look out. I realize it's not always easy to get over it. It's not necessarily easy to move forward. But here's the key. Listen carefully. The pain of letting go is less than the pain of holding on. The pain of letting go is less than the pain of holding on and missing your destiny. You realize if I'd have stayed in the pity party that I was in for a while, that I'd have missed coming to Plainfield, Illinois? That I would have missed God's will for my life? And maybe I would have missed somebody's helping somebody find salvation. But I want to tell you something, folks. I threw my crutches away. Somebody said to me one day, that, that religion is just a bunch of old crutches for weak people. Not bad for a cripple man, is it? Especially one that's going to be 70 in March. But friends, can I tell you something? My God is able, the scripture says, to do exceeding, abundant, above anything that I could imagine. He can transform our habits. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Christ's life should be our example. Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed by Judas. But what did he call Judas in the garden? When Judas came up to give him a kiss on the cheek, what did he call Judas? Did he say, hey, you low life, no good, slime ball bucket? He said, friend, what are you doing? Friend, here's what Jesus was actually saying. He was saying, Judas, I've already gotten over what you're about to do. I've already gotten over what you're about to do. And he says, friend, go ahead and do what you have to do. Friend, to a betrayer. I've said here a hundred times, Flesh and blood is not my enemy, but the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But don't come in my church to shoot me up. I'll shoot back. You see, in the Amplified, there, there's a story in the Bible about a man laying beside the pool of Siloam. And that man laying beside the pool of Siloam was crippled. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do? Actually, what Jesus was saying, are you serious about being healed? Are you serious about your salvation? Are you serious about your family? Are you serious about your job? Are you serious about whatever it is? Are you serious about it? And if you are, then I have healing for you. If you're not, then you can go and use the excuse. But the man's answer to Jesus told him that they were filled with excuses. Well, I've been blind a long time and there's nobody, or crippled a long time, the waters get ruffled and I'm not able to get in and I just, I just can't do it myself. I need help. You know what Jesus said to him? He said, Get up and walk. And for the first time, this man finally believed that he had control of his destiny. I want you to know, folks, you have control of your destiny. You can follow God or you can follow the ways of the world. 
but it's in your hands. God will not make you do it his way. God will take your setback, whether it's a financial one, whether it's a relational one, whether it's a health-related setback, and he'll make it a setup. He'll take your setback and make it a step up for you. If you'll just trust him. Right back to the word we've had for three years. Pestos. Trust God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever trusts him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Forget the believe stuff. It's the trust stuff that's important. We start making excuses. Year after year, they become ingrained in us. There's something you need to get over. Is there? A childhood that wasn't so great, a friend that betrayed you, a business that didn't make it, your goals you didn't reach. Now you're using those as a crutch to say, I'm satisfied where I am. I don't know about you, but I want to be the best God can make me. I hope everybody in this room has the same attitude. Let's sing our last song. Six hundred nineteen. We'll sing the first verse. take care of you. Father, we ask you to make your face shine upon us and grant us your peace. And God, I just simply say this little simple prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord. And I'll give you the praise and the thanks. God, for those today who that prayer echoes the depth of the yearning in their heart, I pray, Lord, for them that now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they will declare with their mouth the salvation of the Lord. Bless us, Father, we pray in Christ's name, and we look forward to what you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen.